everyone and welcome to another episode of Classic Gamer 74. I am your host Anthony Gamer and this is my friend. Hi everyone, my name is Mumford. And today we're going to be discussing Lost Classics for the Atari 2600 Part 2. With the Atari 2600 having such a large library, it made sense that some great games would get lost in the shuffle. Oh, that's right. And uh, because you had so many craptacular games in there, uh, made by uh, companies that just kind of popped up out of nowhere, there were a lot of games that were actually good that were ignored. Uh, that's correct. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, these are games that I myself found pretty good that didn't get a lot of publicity. Um, if you agree, uh, let us know in the comment section below. And if you have some other ones you'd like us to talk about in another episode, also let us know. So without further ado, let's get into the games. Are you, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. All right then, let's get to it. And our first game for today is Sneak and Peek. This was uh, from 1982 from U.S. Games programmed by Paul Wilson. Now this game is exactly what it looks like. You're playing hide and seek. Now you can have uh, two players, but I'll warn you that if you actually play with someone, they really do have to cover their eyes like you're playing hide and seek for real. Now you have uh, one, two, three rooms to hide in and an outside. And I'll tell you, there are some really interesting hiding spots that you probably wouldn't even think of and I mean interesting like for instance when you hide under one of the stepping stones in the front yard but anyway the game itself is a lot of fun and it's very challenging against the computer because they really find some places to hide that you've never thought of overall it's a fun game for gamers of all ages all right, and our next game is Entombed. This is from 1982. Now, in this game, you are an archaeologist, and you have been uh, caught in these catacombs, and you're trying to get out of there uh, as the screen's moving. And you had some zombies coming after you, but you can grab these special blocks called Make Breaks and break your way out in case you go down the wrong tunnel. Now, as this game goes on, it gets more and more difficult as the map moves a lot quicker really a fun game and a challenging game and uh, one that uh, was overlooked and next up we have Frogger 2 3 Deep now this game was released in 1984 by Parker Brothers and programmed by Mark Lesser another interesting fact is this game was actually not an arcade game first, uh, like the original Frogger, uh, which you discussed in two really great episodes. Uh, regardless, it was actually a game that was original and made by Parker Brothers. In this game, you take on the role once again of Frogger, and your goal is to get him home. However, this time, instead of just crossing the street and the uh, pond in one screen, you have to get across three separate screens. First one, you're underwater. Second one, you're above water, and last of all, he's got a house in the clouds, and you got to bounce your way up there. Uh, even though the game was kind of a late release, as 84 was the year of the video game crash, the game itself is really a whole lot of fun, and definitely one that uh, I believe people should take a second look at. And our next game is Gopher. This is from 1982 by U.S. Games. Programmed by Sylvia Day and Henry Will IV. In this game, you take on the role of a farmer who's having trouble with gophers trying to dig up his garden and eat his precious uh, vegetables. So you have to fill in the holes uh, as the gophers are digging and keep them out. Luckily, a bird flies by every once in a while and drops a seed so you can keep planting more vegetables. But be warned, it becomes really hard at that point because you got to bury the seeds and then keep an eye on the gopher with that in mind i have to say this is a great game because it involves a lot of multitasking and the challenge is always there and our next game is mad missile attack and defense from 1982 in this game you are trying to defend your civilization against these guided missiles interestingly the best way i can describe this game is it is a combination of 
Atlantis, and Missile Command. One other interesting thing about this game is in two-player mode, one person can control the missiles and one person can be the defender. I'll tell you what, I got a feeling that this game probably caused a lot of fist fights. Uh, if any of you ever gotten a fist fight with your brother, sister, or whoever over this game, tell us about it in the comments below. And next up, from 1982, we have Picnic from US Games, programmed by Tom Sloper. In this game, you are trying to enjoy a picnic, but a bunch of bugs are intent on stealing your food. So the only defense you have is the swatter. When they get too close, you hit the swat button and you smack them and knock them away. You can also put them in the bug trap, although to be honest, it's actually a better idea just to swat the suckers and not worry about that. Uh, the game itself is a whole lot of fun and it's got to be probably one of my favorite paddle controlled games. Piece of cake, my foot. Uh, don't let the title of this game fool you. It's anything but. In this game, you take on the role of a baker and you are trying to build a cake. Uh, you, The conveyor belt with the platter comes by and you drop one layer of the cake, the second layer of the cake, and then put a cherry on top. Sounds easy, right? Well, like any other game, it gets hard pretty fast and it's really hard to get all the pieces onto the platter as they move by. Uh, really a challenging game and one that will keep you coming back again and again. And next up from US Games we have Commando Raid. It was programmed by Wes Traeger and Henry Will IV. In this game you are trying to fend off some evil androids that are hell-bent on destroying your city. Uh, you see them parachute out of these helicopters, so you have to shoot them and the helicopters. If they get past, um, they start trying to destroy your buildings, and if three of them get through, well, your building is finished. Also, a big plane will come by and try to drop a bomb on you, so you gotta stop them. And all this stuff is going on at the same time, so... Yep, the frustration level is high, but sure as heck the fun level is as well. And our next game is Squeeze Box. Mama has a squeeze box, Daddy never sleeps at night. Uh, wrong kind of squeeze box, dude. Oh, sorry about that. I love that song. Well, me too, but... Anyway, uh, in this game, you are a jailbird, and you're trying to escape from jail with your uh, pistol and trying to shoot through the walls that are trying to squish you. Uh, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like, I guess, a horizontal version of Breakout, I guess, except for in this one, you're really, really trying to break out. Uh, as time goes on, those walls come really, really fast, and if you touch part of it, you're it. You're finished. Three times touching in, it's game over. Overall, I like this game a lot. I found myself playing it for hours on end one time. Uh, just a lot of fun. And our final game for today is Demolition Herbie. This was released by Telesis in 1982 and was programmed by Don Ruffcorn. Yeah, and if the game was released by Telesis, you know it's rare and valuable, like every other game they made. That's true, not as valuable as some, but yet not exactly easily affordable by some. In this game, you take on the role of Demolition Herbie, and you are trying to fill in all the squares. Uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Amadar and Pepper 2, I guess. And in this one, you can actually bump the other guys off the screen as long as you hit them from behind. You hit them head on, and you'll get knocked off. And watch your fuel level, because once your fuel level is up, you're also out. A really fun game. Not totally original, but... You know, at that point, <laughs> there really had been some games that weren't totally original, but yet the game is still a lot of fun and is definitely a lost classic. If you have any other games you'd like to suggest for a part three, let us know about it in the comments section below, as I would really like to do another one of these. As with such a great library that the 2600 has, I'm always discovering new games. In our next episode, we're going to be discussing games you may not know exist. Well, that brings us to the end of another exciting episode of Classic Gamer 74. I really hope you all enjoyed it. Oh, I sure did. I, I know. We, we always have fun here, don't we? Oh, yeah. 
And if you did like it, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to share the videos with some of your friends and family if you think they're worth sharing. And don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd really like to hear what you have to say. And don't forget to click that little bell icon so that you'll be notified when I upload new episodes. Well, until next time, I am Anthony Gamer and I'm Mumford, and we will see you all in the next episode. Until that time, be strong, be safe, be healthy, be happy, and above all, take care of each other and be kind to each other. See you guys soon. Bye. Bye, everyone.